Hi, this is Dr. Cook, your Chem 240 instructor. Let's take a look at the next video. In this video, I want to talk about ethers very briefly. Ethers are molecules which have an oxygen attached to two different carbons. And so here you can see a quite simple ether, what we refer to as diethyl ether. The naming for the molecule has both of these ethyl groups named to show that there are two ethyl groups on the oxygen. Uh, this is a cyclic version. This is what we refer to as THF or tetrahydrofuran. Other kinds of cyclic ethers are these three-membered rings, which we refer to as epoxides. Epoxides are more reactive than most other ethers, which are generally thought to be stable and inert. Some ethers are very important, such as methyl tertiary butyl ether, which is added to gasoline to increase the octane rating. So MTBE you might have heard about as an additive for gasoline. Well in naming ethers, according to IUPAC naming rules, we consider the two carbon groups that are attached to the oxygen as substituents on the oxygen. So this is an ether molecule in which one side has a methyl group and the other side has an ethyl group. So this is methyl ethyl ether. That's the formal name for this molecule. If it's two of the same groups, we can use di, for example, diethyl ether. Here's an example of isopropyl phenyl ether. We haven't talked about the naming for these kinds of groups yet, but that's a phenyl group. If you have an ether as a substituent on a larger molecule and you're not using the oxygen actually as the parent name for the molecule, using ether as the parent name, we simply take the YL ending of the substituent and add OXY or oxy to refer to the substituent is containing the oxygen. So in this case we have benzene as the parent molecule and attached to that is a methoxy group. So this would be referred to as methoxy. It refers to the methyl group attached to an oxygen. And there are two of them so we refer to this as a dimethoxy benzene molecule. Or an isopropoxy, isopropyl group added with an oxygen attached to a larger molecule an isopropoxy, or an ethoxy. Uh, those would be considered as substituents on a larger molecule. We talked about substitution reactions in the last chapter, and I want to mention that this substitution reaction can be used to make ether molecules using the chemistry that we've just talked about. So if you take an alcohol and react it with sodium metal or sodium hydride, you can make the sodium alkoxide molecule that is now a good nucleophile. And if you react that with something like iodomethane to do an SN2 substitution reaction, you can generate this methyl cyclopentyl ether. So how would you make molecules such as these molecules? What do we want to start with? Well, this we could start with phenol because we can do a substitution on this bromide or iodide molecule, which is on a primary carbon. So that would be the best way to do this because we want to take this proton off and then do the SN2 substitution. The same thing here, we want to use the alcohol that's attached to the cyclohexyl part of this because doing an SN2 substitution on the primary ethyl bromide would be the easiest way to get the second group on. But this is a way to make ethers is to do the substitution reactions by deprotonating the OH group to make an alkoxide and then reacting it with an appropriate alkyl halide. Epoxides or the three membered ring ether compounds are particularly interesting because they're much more reactive than other ethers. Ethers are generally inert however the ring strain in a three membered ring makes it prone to being able to do substitution reactions where we've broken one of the carbon oxygen bonds to put something else on. And we can make epoxides directly from alkenes using perbenzoic acid. This refers to metachloro perbenzoic acid which looks like this. And again, don't worry about this chemistry. I'm not going to test over epoxide chemistry, how to make them or what they can do. But I just want to point out that if we have this molecule with an OO bond, we can take this oxygen and insert it into uh, an alkene to make epoxide. So actually generating epoxides from alkenes is a pretty straightforward reaction. And then we can do other kinds of chemistry with that. So epoxides are somewhat special in terms of ether reactivities in that the ring strain affords more opportunities to do chemistry with them.